Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Thoughts and Coffee. We are celebrating our 100th episode. And let me tell you, it's been a crazy couple of weeks in my life, in the world itself, in supply chain. So there's a lot to talk about, and I'm really excited that uh, Audrey Ross is with me here today. But before we get started, let's talk about our sponsor, Emerge. Emerge is proud to partner with Thoughts and Coffee to elevate our combined focus on empowering and growing meaningful relationships in the freight industry, the first and only freight-specific RFP platform. Emerge is reinventing freight procurement by offering solutions that enhance the spot and contract procurement process, enabling shippers to make the most strategic decisions possible possible, saving invaluable time and enhancing productivity. Learn more at emergemarket.com forward slash thoughts and coffee. So first of all, before we get started, I want to say happy International Women's Day to everyone. Everybody was really excited to get started. We had some people in the comments even before we went live. So thank you so much for all of your support. Thank you so much for all the amazing women out there in supply chain doing their thing. And of course, we want to send some love and light over to Ukraine. Audrey and I, over the last couple of weeks, have been doing some stuff in the background, supporting, donating. Um, because it's a crazy situation, and obviously we want to send some love and light over there. So let's talk about the 100th episode, because I can't believe that it's the 100th episode, and we want to give away some amazing swag. So we are going to be giving away six pieces of Let's Talk Supply Chain swag, and you get to pick whatever you want from our shop. So it could be the Let's Talk Supply Chain mug, which we did give away another one of these mugs to John Buglino, who was the follower of the month for February. Um, we just didn't announce it last week. I think we're going to announce it this week. So congratulations to John. So maybe you want a mug. Maybe you want a trucker's hat. Maybe you want one of our t-shirts. I mean, we've got a lot of stuff on that shop over at letstalksupplychain.com. And so all you have to do in this particular post is share it, like it, tag us in your post and tag three people who uh, haven't joined us this morning. And so obviously, we want to thank all of you for being a part of Thoughts and Coffee, because we've been doing it for 100, 100 episodes. All right. So let's talk about what's happening at Let's Talk Supply Chain. And then we're going to bring Audrey Ross up, obviously my trade bestie. I have a lot to say about her because she has been fantastic over the last couple of weeks. Obviously, we were at TPM Tech, and then we were at TPM. And then I don't know if majority of you guys know but last Thursday, I did have surgery, which I will be going into a little bit more detail as I recover, uh, letting you guys know a little bit more about my journey. But she has been instrumental. I'm going to cry. <laughs> she has been a huge, huge, huge support for me um, over the last couple of days because uh, it's been quite the journey to recover, and I still have a couple more weeks for that to happen. But let's talk about what's happening with Let's Talk Supply Chain. So we've got a brand new Woman in Supply Chain episode this week. I mean, how fitting. It's International Women's Day today. And our feature is Mary McNelly. Now, if you don't know who Mary is, you definitely need to go and follow her. We finally got to meet in person after a couple of years over at TPM, and she is a force to be reckoned with. She handles all of the global logistics and supply chain network design over at Crocs, and she really tells us all about her journey and what that has looked like for her in supply chain. So go and check that out. It's episode 250, wherever you subscribe to the podcast. What's next? Oh, did you guys know yesterday we hit 45,000 followers over on LinkedIn, and we are so proud, so excited. I mean, three years ago, 
when uh, I first hired my first team member, um, we were at 3,400 followers. And so it's been quite the journey and just want to say thank you so much to everybody because that's quite the accomplishment. And then, of course, we just want to go over some of the events that we've got coming up. So uh, action items with DC Shvigola, that happens every second Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern. We've got no bullshipping with Hope White every fourth Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern. And remember, if you missed any of these, you can go and check them out over on the Let's Talk Supply Chain YouTube. Of course, we've got Log Tech Live with Eric Johnson, and he spoke all about TPM on the last episode, so go check that out. We've got the Global Supply Chain Sustainability Summit with four kites happening on Wednesday. And then, of course, course today right after this at 12 p.m eastern mercado is going live for first things first which we're super excited about this is the second episode of their show and they're talking all about the first mile of logistics we've got coming in hot with abby baird which happens the uh, fourth thursday of every month as well and i think that's it for me we need to bring audrey ross up good morning how are you good morning from Toronto. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're both coming that July from Toronto. We only flew Toronto. back last night. We're still on West Coast time, so it's a little okay. bit early for us. So we're trying to get, you know, the foggy brain out. But yeah. how is everything going? Introduce yourself. And thank you so much for coming on today for our 100th episode. Yeah, thrilled to be here celebrating International Women's Day. Um, I'm Audrey Ross. I'm here in Toronto. Uh, I'm an in-house logistics and custom specialist at uh, Orchard Custom Beauty, an award-winning business-to-business private labeling company specializing in cosmetics, beauty tools, and bath accessories. Um, oh, shout out to Irina, who took us out for brunch in, uh, in Long Beach uh, last weekend, So, where everything was scratch-made and mostly organic, just if everyone was wondering, because that's... We have well, to say love. that because we love California food. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Scratch. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So while you're up here on stage, I mean, it's been quite a couple of days. And so I mean, I so, just want to thank I've seen you. you for the first time, right? <laughs> well, I know. We've been together a lot over the last couple of days, like a lot, um, which has been amazing. And I just want to, in front of everybody, thank you so much for yeah. everything that you've done for me over the last couple of days. I definitely have not been easy to be with, and it hasn't been an easy journey, but you were yeah. there every step of the way. And uh, I just want to say thank you. Yeah, well, I think this community will agree that it's, you know, it's good for you to have a friend there. And, uh, you know, we had quite a few people who were who were sending support and sending love. So so it was, uh, I think, as best an experience as you could possibly have under the circumstances. So. Absolutely. All right. Let's talk about TPM. Tell oh, my me gosh. About the last couple of weeks and everything we've kind of gone through. I mean, I don't know if everybody knows this, but Jonathan Kempe of Let's Talk Supply Chain Asia Pack and I, we hosted TPM TV for TPM Tech as well as TPM. And so we got to um, interview a whole bunch of people. I got to do some women on the street interviews. I'm going to pull up some photos in just a second. It was really, it was really fun watching you work on that. So I was mostly attending the conference and then, you know, someone, um, like, you know, that we know, you know, someone like a DC or an Akshay, like we'd be walking by and then Sarah and John would be like filming and they'd have their camera guy and they'd be like walking and we're like, oh, oh okay, we'll see you later. Right. So it was, it was pretty interesting to watch that whole thing come together. Oh yeah. 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 There's our so this, in. this was TPM tech. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but we have two TikTok videos out there. I don't know if we oh posted gosh. the second one. Peter Churchwell joined us for the second TikTok video that we did yeah. with Sea Roots. But yeah. uh, this was Jonathan and I by the stage before we did that TikTok. And then I'm talking to Robin, Robin from, from my woman in supply chain or women on the street interviews during the networking, which was a lot of fun. I think I was asking him what superpowers he would want in his day to day in supply chain. This was the woman on the street interviews for TPM Tech as well, which was a lot of fun. And then, of course. We've got the crew together. So we've got Akshay from Terminal 49, Audrey, Brian, myself, and Jonathan as well. So we had a really, really great time. I mean, there was 500 people at TPM Tech. There was 2,500 people at TPM as well. Yeah. And I mean, quick highlight, the best the best session at um, TPM Tech would have been probably Brian, mine, and Simon's, you know, because we were up on the stage talking about the customer and forwarder relationship. So... 
you know, thanks to Eric Johnson for that, that opportunity for us to be up there. Um, and then, you know, TPM is just, if, if people don't know, it's, I mean, it's a massive conference talking about, you know, Chris, this year, the hot topic is supply chain, right? And we, we you know, it talks a lot about maritime shipping. Um, there are some segments on other parts of our business, transportation, trucking, air cargo. Um, but really, you know, sort of the emphasis was on what's going to happen, what's happening in LA Long Beach right now, because we can see it, we're right in front of it. And then what's going to happen in the summer, there's going to be some labor negotiations. Um, and then I think one of the one of the key sessions that a lot of us stayed for till the end was lunch with Lars and giving us sort of insights on, on you know, the impact of the Russian and Ukrainian, um, the Ukrainian crisis on, and what that is might mean for us sort of moving into this year. So another challenging year, it sounds like. Um, for those of us in supply chain and logistics, but you know, we can all work together. And I think the, the overall theme of TPM relationships matter. Yes. We got we to, we have to remind ourselves of that every single day. Yeah. We heard that over and over and over again. So I just want to say hello to everybody on my personal yeah. We've got Michael Crowell, who we met over at TPM and had a great time. DJ Rick, thank you guys so much for joining us. We've got Jeffrey, Carolina, Erin, uh, Sam is on both places. I think she's on my personal LinkedIn and the Let's Talk Supply Chain, which is amazing. We've got Joe and Heather over there as well as Darshak. Thank you so much yeah. to everybody for joining us. Now we're going to talk about the poll of the week. We haven't done this in a while because we didn't do Thoughts and Coffee last week. I feel like I'm so out of habit right now. <laughs> so the poll of the week, what did we ask you? What kind of music yeah. do you listen to while you work? Well, 24% yeah. of you said classical, 37% of you said rock, 14% of you said country, and 25% of you said other. Audrey, what kind of music do you listen to while you So work? it's a bit of a mix. If I've got to really jam it up, it's like I turn on this like techno remix of Depeche Mode and just as fast as I can type because um, it's quite a bop. Um, sometimes it's sort of an 80s, you know, I got I got a great 80s um playlist last week in, in LA. Um, but I do classical music, you know, sort of when you head into the afternoon, you're kind of like trying to think, you know, when you want to focus, you get that Mozart. I think it's supposed to help you with math and things like that. So awesome. I go, it's like my personality. I'm all over the place. <laughs> well, I have a woman in supply chain play, playlist over on Ooh. Apple Podcasts. And so I listen to that because it kind of like motivates me. That's a it's jam. Songs. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. But there's a couple of people that said silence. Some people said 80s music or podcasts or radio. Uh, contemporary. So many people. I think we had like 66 people uh -huh. comment on that particular post, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, so we want to hear from all of you. Davin says, channel that inners inner 80s child Audrey. Look, we've got John Zagino <laughs> here who won the mug. The mug is on his video. So we're super excited for that. And then Larry said, I can see Audrey very much into the house. with <laughs> That is funny. All right. Well, should we get into our first? Yeah, article? maybe. All right, <laughs> All right. So our first article, we wanted to focus on a couple of things for International Women's Day. One is outsourcing. Right. And so because we're hearing about the great resignation and um, obviously outsourcing could be a new strategy. And so this is an article by Zenoff, and we're going to have them on the podcast a little bit later on either this month or next month to talk a little bit more about what they do. But this particular article talks about retaining talent. And what they said is 1.5 jobs for every unemployed American. I mean, that's a really, really high stat, especially when you're going to look for a job, right? Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. What do you think? What did you think of this article? Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's great because it makes it very succinct, right? You've got you've got it's sort of three key points, right? Mm -hmm. Just empower your teams with outside expertise, right? So outsource stuff that you know it's just. Why make a team, you know, there's there's growth opportunities for a team member to learn and do things. But sometimes when you're really in the thick of growth and managing your customers and your all your established business, you do just it's it's simpler, it's faster, it makes more sense. Have someone come in from the outside and just tackle a certain part of the work. Um, could be the organizational process, could be IT. Um, you know, instead of trying to have have, you know, an additional part of learning on the job, not that learning on the job is bad, but but for certain tasks, it's like get it out of the your space um, because you want to watch, you know, their second point is about burnout. And I think a lot of us in supply chain, we've been working really hard and burnout is 
certainly reality for all of us. I've, I've struggled with it a little bit over the last year. Um, and you know, where you can try to delegate and try to get support um, is really key. And then taking the pressure off middle management. Um, while all of us are sort of struggling and, and regular employees, you know, your employees are going through these burnout phases or this overwork phase, your middle management, you know, especially great managers, you know, leaders in, in your company, they're taking on not only their own work, their own burnout, their own extra staff, but they're also, you know, if they're a great manager, they're taking on what their team is going through too. So it's just yeah. added pressure. So I think this really succinctly sort of wraps up why you would want to consider outsourcing um, and what the benefits are. So it's a great one. Yeah, and outsourcing could, like you said, could be a really great strategy yeah. um, to really fill some of those gaps. They're talking about the baby boomers leaving the industry. And so how do you fill those gaps? Yeah. Well, you could look at experts outside of the company to come in and really help with that. But it's something to think about when you're thinking about the talent pool and everybody that you've got within the organization mm -hmm. and who you need to put together. Yeah. And right. a special note on International Women's Day, um, you know, there was an economist in Canada who kind of coined the term she session, right? So coming out of the pandemic and, and while being in the pandemic, there was sort of a she session where a lot of, um, you know, a lot of, I mean, it was sort of majority gender identified women, but a lot of parents had to step back because of the pandemic situation, specifically around schooling and their children, um, and just making sure they were supported because of course, missing school and, and the, you know, just the stress of it. So that caused a huge, you know, we've got retiring, we've got people just shifting jobs, people just wanting to change, but then you do have, have, you know, sort of parents or women specifically impacted um, by the childcare issue. Um, and so for International Women's Day, I can't, can't go without mentioning that one. Yeah, exactly. And it talks about what the millennials are really looking for yes. from those organizations that they're looking to work for. I mean, they're really looking for different things. And so yes. you've got to rethink yeah. those positions. Yeah. Right. I mean, you've got to rethink how you're reaching people. You've yeah. got to rethink what that position looks like. You've got to rethink yeah. how flexibility really does matter for everybody. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. All right. So we've had some really, really great comments. Let's talk about the next one. So the next article is women in crypto. Now, the reason why I picked this one is because um, it's kind of like women in supply chain. <laughs> They're kind of where we were a couple of years ago. And I think it's really important to highlight other industries and talk a little bit about what they're going through as well, especially on International Women's Day. And actually, the theme for this year is break the bias. I didn't know, I don't know if you know that, but it's break the bias for International Women's Day. All right, so 15% of investors are women in crypto, which is not a lot. Five out of 121 founders are women. Only 9% understand crypto. And three out of 88 speakers at a particular event were women. And actually, one woman said she lost speaking engagements to a man that she taught. Yeah. Like, that's kind of crazy. What did you think about this article? I'm sort of just getting into crypto. I okay. don't know too, too much about it, but I know there's a lot of people looking into this, making investments. Um, and so, you know, but there's a lot of similarities, right? Like when that lady said that she lost the speaking engagement. Yeah, that man. sounds a little bit like supply chain. <laughs> well, like supply chain and exactly what we're doing on Blended too, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it hits, hits with blended hard. Um, I think that the, I was lucky. Um, there's a little collective here in Toronto. Um, and about, gosh, it must have been five, five or six years ago when Bitcoin and blockchain were sort of, when blockchain was really sort of um, coming into the, the, the sphere here. Um, I found a group called Crypto Chicks, and they were doing um, free sessions on what it is. Um, and just basic like 101, right? Like crypto for dummies. Um, and so I went and, and got to do that. And so I highly recommend, like, if you don't know anything about it, you know, I mean, sometimes it sounds kind of frivolous. It sounds like, what is this? Why am I getting it? Like, there's so many other things, um, you know, but there is a, there's a space for it. And if you're in certain spheres, um, even retail, when we talk about NFTs, you know, even if you're Hermes or Chanel, you don't want to get into NFTs, but people keep stealing your right. brand and pulling them into NFTs. So you sort of yeah. got to have to be in it. Um, and I think for retailers as well, when you look at the potential, the conversations around the metaverse, it sounds, kind of, you know, for some of us, you're like, that sounds kind of dumb. It sounds kind of extra. It's probably, you know, like if people are interested in it, it's going to happen. So then you need to kind of understand enough about it 
that you can position yourself as either in or out. Um, but I do think as, as women, sometimes, you know, we, we, we tend to have sometimes, um, we have maybe imposter syndrome. And so you don't want to go into a room not knowing anything about this. So, you know, certain groups and getting yourself a little bit educated kind of gives you a more comfort level. But at the same time, you know, like a lot of these things that involve wealth, um, there's already a limited pool of women who are participating in great investment and large um, or are large, have a large wealth to them. Um, so this is just sort of another space where it, it sort of emphasizes the exclusion um, of sort of underrepresented or women um, in this space already. So, you know, well, we're already sort of at a challenge. Audrey is killing it this morning. I love it. I think you should take over the show today. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. So I wanted to leave this up because there's some resources there within this article that you can go and check out if you're a woman, you know, or anybody really that wants to check out more about crypto. It's all right there. And if you have um, an association or a group, you definitely want to message the hustle so that they can include that next time as well. Laura has joined us this morning. Thank you so much, Laura, for joining us. And thank you so much, everybody. I just can't yeah. believe that it's the 100th episode and we're celebrating it on International Women's Day. And plus, you know, we've got two women up here on stage, which is pretty crazy. Well, let's get to our last article. We might be ending a little bit early today for our one oh. episode, but let's see what we can do. So our last one is eight e-commerce trends to keep an eye on. Now, this one is crazy because what they were talking about was malls for logistics and using malls for return sites. And they also talk about no more 30... Th I can't even talk this morning. No more third party retailers, which is going to help better control inventory and customer experience. Nike is going to be 70% direct by 2027. So what did you think about this article? I brought this up like there's some supply chain, but there's also some other things that we want to consider when we think about e-commerce and we think about our businesses within supply chain and how we can support our customers, right? Yeah. And I think e-commerce has been a very interesting space because it, it really sort of um, just happened. And then a lot of people had to catch up to it. So we've had a lot of regulatory changes, even just recently. I mean, e-commerce e has been around for, I don't know, a decade. When did eBay start? Like 12 years ago, 20 years ago? I don't know. I'm not that caffeinated. But the government is really only catching up now in most countries to, to address e-commerce concerns, um, the privacy issue, um, usually they start with tax. So they've been working on tax for a while. How are they going to tax your e-commerce stuff? Um, so it's been a while and I don't know that it gets the, I think people still think of it as sort of this, this niche or sub um, culture, but most people I would say are buying stuff over the internet. And then what does the expansion of the internet into IOT mean? Um, for that shopping experience. Um, and I think this article highlights something like, it's really interesting to see e-commerce, you know, we stores go from, we go from an in-store, what, brick and mortar store onto e-commerce. And then now it's like, we're going to come back to brick and mortar because that supplements your e-commerce. Um, so it's interesting how, you know, we're humans and we don't, you know, we're not robots who just go on the computer. Um, we want that interaction or those experiences. And, and then how does that work in e-commerce where it can be a bit transactional? Yeah. Um, but this had some great points, right? And the privacy thing with Apple, that's kind of fascinating. If you're, if you're into if you're into any sort of legal or or um, you know, kind of IP privacy stuff, that's that's a fascinating turn of events. Absolutely, because Apple is getting into ads, so they're gonna stop yeah. or they already they already have stopped Facebook tracking. Um, they talked about brands investing in their own content to reach customers. Yeah. Now that's yeah. really interesting for supply chain brands because you can work with your customers to create content for them to be able to reach their future customers as well. They talked about an increase on mobile payments and that yep. Amazon and Walmart are not going to stop buying planes because they definitely <laughs> don't want any supply chain disruptions moving forward, just like the rest of us. But Amazon and Walmart kind of have the money to be able to do that. And then something else that they said was that there's going to be a focus on blockchain and metaverse that's coming. Yes. And so yeah. if you're not thinking about these things, and we've heard about blockchain for a very, very long time, and some people yeah. are skeptical, some people are all in, some people are skeptical, there's some people in between, yeah. Yeah. but I guess 
you know, we really have to start thinking about these things in the future and what our customers are thinking about, right? Especially being in supply chain. And yeah. so, you know, whether you're a distribution facility or, you know, you're a warehousing company or you're a supply chain tech company, what are your customers looking at? What yeah. are the things that are coming down the road for them? And that's why I liked this article. And so that blockchain and metaverse, how yeah. are we going to fit in as supply chain professionals? How are we going to fit in as supply chain brands to enable them and empower them to really embrace some of these things? Well, and we're, I mean, we're customers too, right? So we, we're we getting these experiences. You know, John makes a good point. Why do I have to like I'm busy. I've got stuff to do. I want to spend time with my kids, my friends. I want to eat donuts. And it's like, I got to drive around and do all the shopping. And like the, the days yeah. of, of, you know, you know, the days of, of, you know, the family shopping trip on the Saturday hit all the stores. Nobody really wants to do that. They want to spend time together. Mm -hmm. They don't want to do the errand piece. And so, you know, from, from that perspective, retailers and, and people that sell things, it's like, how can you make it more convenient? Right. And I think we saw throughout the pandemic that, that Instacart, opportunity walmart really stepped up on their like pick up and ordering things um you know yeah there's stuff you you know you want to see and touch and feel um but if you can limit some of the other stuff like if you like a particular brand of toilet paper and you can just have it come to your house all the time and you don't have to think about it you're good to go right but on the flip side of that we're also working in this space and so if we're dealing with clunky platforms it's hard to to support you know our customer service you know we want a great customer service experience we're making it simpler for our customers, but it's really challenging, manual, difficult internally. And yet we're working in a space that is essentially the frontier or about to be the frontier of Web3 IoT. That doesn't make sense either. You know, you're, you're, if you think of your workers as customers, they're, they're getting this great, smooth or at least more convenient experience, you know, in their personal life. And they're not getting in their workplace. That leads to our first article about labor where you're going to have some issues with people leaving. So. Absolutely. Well, I am just getting through recovery. So we are going to leave you a little bit early today. I'm really sorry, but it's our 100th episode. And we talked about so much today. I want to thank everybody for joining us and for supporting us over the last 100th episode or 100 episodes. I'm telling you, <laughs> I can't even speak today. I don't even know if we want this to go for 30 minutes. <laughs> Next week, I've got a merge coming on as my guest. And it's going to be a great episode talking about tech and some other things. We're also going to be talking about celebrating wins. But anyways, thank you so much for everybody for thank joining us. Everyone. Audrey, you're amazing as always. Thanks so much.